Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to set up and draw in a document that's going to allow us to mirror things both vertically and horizontally. So we've got four quadrants working. I'm going to click here on new file. I'm going to create a square document. The first time you do this I suggest strongly that you use my dimensions. Mine's going to be a thousand by a thousand pixels. I'll click create. I'm going to select the rectangle tool. I'm going to click once in the document and make a rectangle that is half the width and half the height of the document. In other words, four of these are going to fit in it. For me, because the document's a thousand by one thousand, that's going to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels. I'll click OK. Now I'm going to move this to the top corner of the document. Now you could move it or you could use the align options. To be sure, I'm going to use the align option, so I'm going to click on horizontal align left and vertical align top. Then I'm going to create a shape inside this, so it doesn't matter what shape it is, but I'm just going to draw out a circle here. I'm going to fill it with black and I'm going to remove the stroke from it. It's just important that we have a something fully enclosed by this rectangle here. In the Layers palette, we're going to go and grab this rectangle and we'll move it above the ellipse. Now, if your rectangle has a fill as mine does, you're going to hide the ellipse, but that's okay because that's going to disappear in a minute anyway. The next thing you're going to do is click away from anything, so nothing is selected there. and None of these little circles here are selected. If you don't do this and if you have something selected, the next thing we're going to do is not going to work. Well, it's not going to be available. So we're going to click here on layer one so that we have the layer itself targeted but not selected. Then we'll go to the fly out menu here and choose make clipping mask. Now make clipping mask will not be available if you have something selected. I'm just going to click to select that and now you get this thing that is a rectangle with an underline under it. And you can see that when we selected it now has no fill and no stroke. So that was why we were not worried about the fact that it was hiding the ellipse because it is now a no fill, no stroke rectangle. I'm going to grab this and drag it under the ellipse. It doesn't matter where we put it, but I think it's better to put it at the very bottom of the document. It just makes better sense. And so we can sort of see what we're doing. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to apply now a stroke to the outside of it. We lost our stroke before. We're just going to quickly get our stroke back. So this is where we're at at this stage. The next thing we're going to do is add another layer to this document. So down the bottom of the Layers palette, you're going to click to add a new layer. And on this layer, you're going to create an overly large rectangle. My document is 1000 by 1000. My rectangle is going to be 2000 by 2000. Essentially what we're looking for is something that's quite a lot bigger than the actual artboard. This is going to be sort of like a container for all of our work, so this is the area that you can't draw outside of. So it needs to be larger than the document. And we're going to square it up on the document, so we want it centered over the document. And the centering is really important because otherwise the rotations are not going to work. So you can see here that my rectangle is much larger than the document. It's also centered over it. Now this can have a border on it if you like, that's just fine. Now before we go any further, what we're going to do is name our layers. So we're going to actually make this the layer called Draw Here. And then up in here in layer 2, we're going to rename this rectangle Ignore Me. While this rectangle is really important, we don't need to know too much about it. So that's why we're calling it Ignore Me. And then we're going to drag this layer, this draw here layer, and just place it in under the ignore me shape. And you'll see that it's now part of layer two. So this layer is embedded inside layer two. Again, that's really important. So next up, we're going to do our transformation. So we're going to select the entire layer two. We're going to choose effect and then distort and transform and then transform. For this transformation, we're going to make it one copy and we're just going to reflect it over the x-axis and you should see this happen. You should see an exact reflection of this shape here. We'll click OK and we'll go and do that again with the effect distort and transform and then transform. You'll say yes to applying a new effect. This is a second effect. Again, we want another copy and this time we want to reflect over the y-axis. 
So the upshot of this should be that you have whatever shape it is in your document in all four quadrants. And we'll just click OK. So now I can go to the Draw Here layer. I'm going to be really careful that I only have the ellipse selected, nothing else, because I don't want to delete anything else. But I do want to delete my ellipse because I don't need that any longer. And I'm now ready to go ahead and do my drawing. So I'm going to do it in the Draw Here layer. For me, I'm going to create an ellipse. So I'm going to the Ellipse tool. I'm making sure I'm on this layer. I have it targeted. I'm going to drag out an ellipse. I'm going to rotate this shape a little bit and then I'll go to Object, Transform and Reflect. I want to reflect it over the vertical so I'll make sure vertical is selected and I'll click Copy so I now have two of these shapes which I'm going to line up over the top of each other. I'm going to select both of these shapes and go to the Pathfinder. You can get to that palette by choosing Window and then Pathfinder and I'll just click here on Unite. So now I have a single heart shape. This heart shape, I'm going to flip the stroke and the fill. I'm going to increase the stroke weight quite a bit. I'm also going to change the colors on this. So I'm going to give it a red stroke and a lighter pink fill. I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees, so I'm just holding the shift key down as I rotate it. And now watch what happens when I drag this shape in. You can see that it's reflecting. It's going to reflect throughout this document, but it's also going to be cropped when it hits the intersection down here. So it's just going to be cropped off as it should be if we were doing mirror drawing. So I'm going to Alt drag a duplicate away because I want a second copy here. I'm just going to line this up to the edges of the artboard here. At this point you can continue and do your drawing. You'll notice that you only need to draw in this quarter and this is the only quarter that you can draw in and everything will be rotated neatly inside the document. So assuming that this is what we want, the last thing that we'll want to do at this stage is to turn off the set of lines that is marking out the area that we're drawing in. So we're going to go down to the very bottom rectangle, which is this one that has the underline under its name. That's important because this is our layer clipping mask and we're just going to turn off the stroke on that. Now you can't turn off the layer clipping mask itself, so you can't hide this because otherwise you're going to lose your drawing design. So you want to make sure it's still visible, but of course you may not want to have it with an outline around it. Now at this stage I'm looking at this and thinking I would like to do something more here. I think I'd like to bring a circle into the middle. So I'm just going to drag my circle in so that it's over the middle of the flower. Now if that's all you came here to do, you're good and done. You have a document set up that you can draw in at any time. So you could actually just save this and maybe leave one ellipse in here, maybe leave the rectangle outline on but delete everything else and you have a document that you could use over and over again for this kind of drawing. But I want to go one step further and what I want to do is to turn this into a pattern. Now I've gone ahead and saved this file and I've closed it and reopened it because I wanted to show you something here. What's happened is that this rectangle that used to be at the bottom of this layer has actually jumped to the top. It's not a big issue but just be aware that it is going to jump to the top of the layer and if you want it out of the way just drag it down to the bottom. Now I want to make a pattern out of this which means that I don't want the rotations to be there, I want the actual objects. Now before I can do anything with this, we need to look at shapes like this, which are these ellipses, in particular the one that's in the middle here, because it's been cut into four pieces. There's a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here. And what's going to happen when we actually crop off to create this sort of quarter element in here that we can then rotate around, is that when you crop something, the 
stroke around the outside goes around the entire crop shape. So if we crop this into a sort of quarter circle, then it's going to have a line down here and a line across here, which is not what we want. So the safest thing to do is to go and grab your entire draw here layer and expand it. So every single thing that has a stroke on it will no longer have a stroke on it. And instead, it's going to have actually a filled path. So let's have a look at one of these groups. This is this circle here. And so instead of being a circle with a stroke, it's now a compound path. In other words, it's a green donut with a blue circle in the middle of it. And the hearts are going to be a pink heart and the border is going to be actually another filled shape. You can see it's a fill now, it's no longer a stroke. That's really important to do. If you find that when you go and crop things, things start to break apart, it's probably because you didn't expand them. The next thing we're going to do is to actually crop this. So we're going to, inside this draw here layer, we're going to create a 500 by 500 pixel rectangle. Well, it's a square. And we're going to place it up in the top corner here. Now, if it worries you that it looks like this, you could just put a stroke on it. What we want to do is to mark out this area because we're going to use this as a cropping guide and a rectangle on the top of everything else that is selected can be used to crop. So I'm going to select this entire draw here element, not the whole layer, just that's really important. It's only draw here. And the top thing here is this 500 by 500 pixel rectangle. I'm going to use it as a guide to crop everything. So we'll go to the Pathfinder, which you can get to by choosing Window and Pathfinder and just click Crop. And this is what we're left with. We have all the elements that are in this area here. So you can see here, this is a group draw here that is just these little elements here. Now down the bottom, you might find as I am that there's a couple of things that look like this. These are just no fill, no stroke shapes. And because they don't have a fill or a stroke, we don't actually need them. So if they worry you, because they always worry me, you can just get rid of them. But basically what we're left with is this group here that is the elements in the top area of the document and they're being rotated around to create this four-way mirror image if you like. Now the next thing or the final thing we need to do before we can actually make a pattern for this is to expand everything but there's a trick here. If you expand something that has a line around it, so it's a, got a stroke or a fill, then it's going to expand into a something. And that's going to mess us up because this thing here, this ignore me rectangle, is only there to hold things together right now. We can't delete it because if we delete it, we're going to break our document, okay? But we can make it no fill and no stroke. So I'm going to click on it here and I'm going to make sure it has no fill and no stroke. So it can't be easily seen, but it is holding things together because it's still there. But because it has no fill and no stroke, the next step that we do, it's going to disappear entirely. If we don't do that, it's going to stay with us. It's going to be a real embarrassment. So now we're selecting absolutely everything and we're just going to expand appearance. And now what we're left with are groups with each of these corner objects. So this is a group of objects, this is a group of objects, this is a group of objects, and this is a group of objects. Now we've got groups inside groups inside groups, so what we could do is pull them out, just for neatness's sake. So now we have four groups inside a layer, inside a layer. Well, they don't even have to be inside a layer, inside a layer. They could just be inside this topmost layer. So now everything is just neatly positioned if I click away from it, you'll see that I have this nice little object. So I'm going to select over everything. Now, if you notice that there are some things that are cut off at the edges here, so that's going to limit my pattern options. I'm going to be able to set this up as a simple grid. It's not going to work if I try and do a half offset. So I'll choose object and then pattern and then make. So just click OK. I'm going to turn off my artboard. So I'm going to hide artboards. I'm going to just make this a simple grid pattern because that is going to work. The others are not going to work nearly as well. They're going to have breaks in them. Now at this stage, I could just click to finish, but I could also put a 
color behind my pattern which it doesn't have right now. So let's just go ahead and let's select the rectangle tool. I'm going to select the default colors here which is white and black. I'm going to click and add a rectangle that is a thousand by a thousand pixels to my document. I'm going to set it up so that it has a colored fill but I want to be able to see the fill so I'm actually going to give it a color but it cannot have a stroke that's really important you don't want any stroke at all and we're going to move it behind everything so I'm going to choose object and then arrange and send to back and now what I need to do is just make sure that it's not cutting anything off so if I just click away from here I want to make sure that there are no cut lines in my design and there aren't any everything's looking perfect so I'll just click done now I'm getting a warning message here that there are some things that are happening with my design and that they won't be editable again later on. That's just fine. I'm going to click OK. There is actually nothing wrong with this design. So let's go ahead now and bring back our artboards and let's go and create a shape into which we can put our pattern. If we go up here to recolor artwork, we're going to be able to recolor the artwork. So using the edit options, I can drag around to just remap the colors or I can individually change the colors by clicking here on unlinking harmony colors. I can go and create a design that's sort of more in the blues and purples and click OK. And that will give me, of course, the original pattern. And this is a recolored version of it. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.